Hey everyone, and thanks for joining us here on another glorious episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. If you are new to the channel, I'd love to welcome you. Highly suggest you go down below, hit that subscribe button, tick that little bell, smash that thumbs up button while you're down there. Really helps us out, and you don't want to miss any future videos just like this one. Speaking about videos, if you are with us today, you have entered a smack dab on episode one of our VFR flight course basics in the Cessna 172. So if you want to know more about airspaces, how to navigate traffic patterns, and much, much more, stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. In this episode, we are going to be taking a flight from Eureka Municipal over to Murray Field. And they are both untowered airports. On our screen right here, it will show all the different airspace classes. And there's only four primary airspace classifications that we're going to be focusing on during this series. In today's lesson, we are primarily going to be focusing on Class G airspaces. But as you can see, Class D airspace, Class C, and B are all different, which we will get into those at a later episode. So now let's go back to the flight plan menu here, and we're going to show you the intended flight course for today. As you see, this is going to be a very short flight. We've only got about five nautical miles between each of these airports. How we're going to proceed today is we're going to be taking off on runway 16, and we're going to be heading southbound. We will then come across here and we're going to be entering either the left crosswind or the left downwind leg for runway 12. Again, if we go ahead and go over to Sky Vector and pull up the specs for Murray Field, in which we're going to be arriving at today, we can see that the surveyed elevation here is 10 feet. It also shows us that this is a non-towered airport will also give us some communication frequencies that we're going to use to let everybody know before we enter that airspace who we are, where we are, and where we intend to go. As we look down on the airport information, we can see runway specs for runway 12 and runway 30. Now we're going to be using runway 12 today and that tells us that we're going to be entering a left traffic pattern for that runway. If we were going to be using runway 30, we would be taking a right traffic pattern. So now a lot of people are not going to understand what that means by left traffic pattern and right traffic pattern. So we're going to talk about that right now before we even get in the air. What you see on your screen right now is depicted a left hand traffic pattern for this particular runway. Now what a left hand traffic pattern means is that every turn that we make in this traffic pattern again within this traffic pattern will always 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 be a left hand turn the only time you will be making a right hand turn on this traffic pattern is when entering the traffic pattern most traffic patterns you want to enter at at least a 45 degree angle and then as you see you will have to make a right hand turn to enter this traffic pattern on the downwind leg after you've entered that traffic pattern on that downwind leg, every turn from there on after will be a left-hand turn. I hope that explains it a little bit for you so you don't get confused when the ATC asks you to enter a left traffic downwind or a left traffic pattern crosswind. So now that we are in the plane, the, one of the first things that I like to do is I, I'm, I'm going to get rid of these yokes here so that this way I can see everything more clearly. So before we do anything, we're going to go ahead and get some power to the airplane and we're going to turn on the master battery. And before we go ahead and start up the plane, because we don't want the batteries to drain, is we're going to go ahead and crack the throttle just a bit and add a full on the mixture. Once we do that, we're going to hit the strobe light, hit the beacon light, and we're going to come down here to the key, go ahead and give it a crank. Now most of the time when you load up in the Cessna 172, your fuel your fuel valve will already be in the on position if it's not you want to make sure that is in the on position before you go ahead and start it or you're going to be sitting there scratching your head to figure out why the plane didn't start after we've started we go ahead and hit the alternator hit the avionics one and two buses and so now that we are running we can come down here and turn up some lights if you do so wish 
Now, before we get going here, we're going to talk about the G1000 just a little bit and what we need to do to get this set up for our flight today. Now, a lot of things are already pre-set up for us, which would be the... Our V-Refs are pretty much already set up in here. Our V-Rotate speed is 55 today, and our Glide Slope speed coming in is going to be 68. Our VY, which is going to get our best rate of climb, which is 72 knots, so we'll go ahead and put that away. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and make sure that this is already set up in GPS mode. You can do that by tapping on this CDI button to make sure that says GPS. Next thing I'm going to do is turn on some wind because I like to know which way the wind is coming in. And you can also go ahead and set your altitude units for yourself as well. That's pretty much all I'm going to do to set the G1000 up for myself here. Over here, the other thing that I want to do is go ahead and hit the menu button. Up here on the map settings, I make sure that I have the maps oriented with north up. Usually helps me out a little bit easier when I'm trying to navigate around and gives me more spatial awareness. Now we have all that set up, we need to set our barrow. Now you can do that one of either two ways. You can either get the ATIS information from the airport, and as you see on this airport we have no ATIS information. All we have is a traffic frequency. So you can either set this by hitting the B button on your keyboard, or you can do it another way. So the other way that we can do this is if we look at the airport information, we can see that the estimated elevation is approximately 20 feet. All right, so that's what we're gonna use to go ahead and set our barrow. If we go ahead and change the barrow setting, you're gonna see that altitude moving up and down. Well, we know we're at approximately 20 feet elevation, so if we go ahead and set that to about 20 feet, that will pretty much put us right on point to our correct barometric pressure. Now, so once we get up in the air, then we can contact ATC and get the barrow that way as well. So now that we have all that set, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing off the ground. We're gonna hit our nav lights and our taxi lights, and we're gonna go ahead and taxi to the runway. Okay, so now that we have everything set up in our aircraft now, the only other thing I wanna do is go ahead and put the flaps down into the 10 degree position. We have our pedo heat now set on. We're gonna turn the taxi lights on so we can prepare for a taxi. Then what we would normally do is get on the radio, get on the traffic guard frequency, and then we're gonna announce our taxi. Oscar Tree Tree Traffic and 489 TG1580 is taxiing to runway 16. So if you look at the windsock over here, it looks like we have a little bit of crosswind coming at us from the west right off the water, so we're gonna keep that in mind when we are taking off. All right, so now what we wanna do is just get lined up on the runway here. Once we're lined up on the runway, we're gonna go ahead and switch our taxi lights off and put our landing lights on now. We've set our barrow. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and apply full power, wait for the power to come up and release the brakes. And as we get up near our 55 knot rotate speed, we will then gently go ahead and pull back on the yoke. Once you lift off from the ground, we're gonna keep our speed at about that 74 knots by either pitching up or pitching down the front nose of the aircraft. Once we get about 500 feet above ground level, we'll go ahead and bring up our flaps. So we're gonna keep maintaining the southerly direction until we gain some altitude. We've caught up to the 500 feet. We're gonna go ahead and bring up our flaps now. Still maintaining climb. You're gonna to have to compensate a little bit. The nose is gonna to wanna to drop just slightly on you. Don't sink, don't sink, don't sink, don't sink, don't sink, don't sink, don't sink. Don't sink, 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 don't sink. Now the thing we need to talk about is traffic pattern altitudes. So most of the time your traffic pattern altitude for a GA plane 
on a VFR flight is going to be a thousand foot above ground level. So as we noted before, as we were looking at the airport information, the elevation of our arrival airport is about 10 feet above sea level. So that means we want to be about a thousand foot above ground level uh, when we're coming in to land. So now that we are up to altitude, we're going to go ahead and bring us down to about 1100 feet and we're going to start making our way over to Murray Airfield now. So we can keep track of where we are just by looking at the GPS and again what we want to do is come in or either on a crosswind leg or the downwind leg for runway 12. We can go ahead and pull back the throttle just a bit and again we're going to try to get our altitude down to about 1100 feet by the time we get close enough to the airport. For right now we can just hold what we've got. Now once we get a little bit closer to the airport then we will come back at you and talk about the procedures for entering runway 12. Until then, enjoy the beautiful scenery that Microsoft Flight Simulator has to offer. When we're about five to 10 miles out from the airport in which we want to arrive at, we need to switch to the, the guard frequency for that airport. So the reason for doing that is again, we need to tell people who we are, where we are, and what we intend to do. So we're gonna select our runway one, two for landing, and we are going to announce a full stop landing. And we're basically right now just gonna announce our position to everybody well, listening to that frequency. All right, now as we get a little bit closer to the airport, we will then announce how we're going to be entering the traffic pattern. So as you can see from the GPS right here, looks like we are just off to the south of the airport. So we're going to start turning towards the Murray Field right now. Now it looks like we're probably going to be coming in on a downwind leg, on a left downwind leg for runway 12. Now the other thing that we can do is go ahead and set our heading bug for the runway heading. Now runway headings are usually the same as the runway number. So if we're going to be following runway 12, the runway heading will be 120. So I like to set my heading bug for 120. This way, it kind of uh, keeps me in track of where we gotta go. So it looks like right here is our airport in which we're entering, and I should have let people know what we're doing. Kilo Echo Kilo Alpha Traffic N489 TG1580 is on downwind runway 12. All right, so we are now entering downwind runway 12. Notice we wanna keep our altitude right about a thousand feet when entering this traffic pattern and we're gonna go ahead and pull back on the throttle just a bit and trim us to make sure that we maintain that thousand feet. Now, one of the things that's really important of me putting in the runway heading here is because this can tell me whether I'm parallel to that runway or not. And at this point, I really wanna be running parallel to runway one, two. So this way, once we pass the runway, uh, we have enough clearance to make our turn to come in for inbound landing. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep monitoring where that runway is compared to our left wing here. Once we get about 45 degrees off the left wing, we're then gonna turn on our base leg turn. Now we're still a little bit low. We like to be up right around a thousand feet. So we're gonna push us back up to about a thousand feet. Now that we are there, we're gonna go ahead and add one notch of flaps and we can do so all the way up into 110 knots. So now that we have our one notch of flaps, we're about 45 degrees off. We can now start making our base leg turn. Again, watching our heading here, because you can't see the runway right now, 
because of the wing, once this... Once this heading bug gets right here on our due west marker, we know we are exactly perpendicular to the runway as we see it right there. Now we can go ahead and turn inbound for the runway, reducing power. And I'm reducing all power all the way down. And what I need to do is bleed off a little speed here so that I can extend my next phase of flaps. All right, looks like I'm low enough to extend those flaps. We are now gonna come in for our landing. Flare just a bit, still bleed off some speed and we are down. All right, everyone, hope you got some information on this video here. Today was the very first episode. We will get more in-depth as we go along. I want to thank everybody for joining us. It's been a pleasure serving everyone today. If you haven't done so already, please go down below, hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, smash that thumbs up button, and as always, keep the blue side up. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.